we're ready to jump in there with regard to our unit on physics. And remember, I'm just picking a few things out of physics to kind of get our feet wet in the subject. So, right, I don't give reading assignments, but you might want to be looking at chapters two and three for this part of the lecture material. One of the things we said about science is that at the crux of science needs to be explanations that don't involve that don't involve any sort of mysterious sort of occurrences that don't involve the supernatural and as it turns out and this is hard for me to believe it used to be that if a, as something moved from position A to position B okay like a hat, okay, it was position A, you come back two hours later since position B, you're like, that hat, like, just mysteriously moved, okay, it was thought that some sort of um, a supernatural force relocated that object. Well, we know that that's not true. Uh, we know that actually in order for something that is located at position A to relocate to position B, there must be some sort of force making it do that. Okay, Energy must be spent, some force must be applied. And we'll be talking more about force and energy. But that's sort of the first thing that I kind of want you to... Uh, we're I'm going to kind of introduce you to the concept of forces. And forces are just so... Oh, how do I say this? Uh, you're like every day. I mean, that makes sense. Okay, we're going to take this object A and we're going to apply a force, F, and it is going to now be at position B. And I'm going to stick with just simple motions for the purposes of uh, this actually entire uh, unit on physics. So forces, like I kind of showed, implied a minute ago, can either be a push or a pull. Forces can, you can, sometimes can see your force, and sometimes forces are unseen. It doesn't mean they're mysterious, it just means that they aren't visible to the naked eye anyway. Sometimes forces are there, but there is no relocation of an object. Forces, in science, we need to, of course, have units associated with all of our measurements. And when we measure force, we use units of newtons. And newtons actually can be broken down into uh, those uh, international standard units. And we'll, we'll actually kind of see why actually a newton is the same thing as a one newton is equal to one kilogram times meters per second squared. So newton is force. Examples of forcing excuse me, examples of forces include pushing and pulling. Gravity is an example of a force that actually is in place, but there's no movement necessarily. Sometimes there is movement because the force of gravity, sometimes there's not. Uh, force of friction is kind of, let's see, I think we'll be talking about that later, but you're probably already familiar. If I'm moving something this way with a force, the force of friction is this way. It's kind of opposite. It's, it's the rubbing thing. Uh, examples of force could be the wind. There are actually are four fundamental forces we talk about in astronomy, uh, present at the time of, uh, early on anyway, after created after the Big Bang. But we have the strong uh, force, which is actually working at the atomic level. A couple of these work at the atomic level. We also have the electromagnetic force that works between uh, like and unlike charges. Then we have weak force, which is also associated with the atom. And then we have the force of gravity. So there are four, what we say, fundamental forces in the universe, not just in, on Earth, in our solar system, in our galaxy, but in the universe. Forces actually can be additive. So, for instance, there's an example coming up where you're kind of pulling a uh, tug of war and you have, uh, this is my forces are additive thing. This is the middle of the rope. We have a rope over here. We have a rope over here. I'm going to kind of butch this. <laughs> Here's my stick, people. 
We have stick people pulling. Um, and we have stick people pulling. Oh, goodness gracious. You get the idea. So we have forces pulling this way and forces pulling this way. They are all working on that rope. We use, for, we use arrows to indicate both the direction of the force, like I'm kind of showing you the direction of the force here. Okay. We also use the length of the arrow to show you how strong it is. So, for instance, if I show, in this case, a tug of war, if I show a big arrow this way and a little arrow this way, you're probably going to see that the net force, if I add these two together, actually is going to result in a force this way, isn't it? So these guys are going to win on this side. So we can use length to show strength of the force. So I have some examples here showing you force, if we call this A, kind of from left to right, A, B, and C. Okay, you probably would tell me B is the weakest force. Okay, the force that's going, let's just call it north, uh, what would that be? Northeast is this one, A. And the force that's the strongest would be C. And here's my example of a tug of war where, I don't know if you can see it because it's kind of small, but down here we've got a combined force F1 would be this pull plus this pull, and combined force F2 would be this pull plus this, these three poles. Poles, you know, P-U-L-L-S. It's kind of neat, and we're not going to play with it this semester, but you can actually take these forces, for instance, kind of these at an angle, and you can uh, line them up, connect them at the, the, the vertice of the force, and come up with the resulting force. That's pretty cool, but we're not going to worry about that this semester. This semester, we're just going to kind of focus on forces that are kind of um, lie in a line. Oh, so I forgot I had this example. Here's a tug of war here, and you can see that they're actually showing, again, it's kind of small, but if you look real closely, and hopefully you can see this in your, your notes that you bought, but down here we see that F2, F2 is larger than F1, okay, so that actually F2 wins out, and we actually have a net force to the, that's where the pull is the most to the right.